Hi, it's Glenn Dietzel here, Editor-in-Chief of Lifestyle Entrepreneur Magazine, and I'm really excited today to interview Karen Kerrigan, uh, the great Karen Kerrigan. Uh, as you will realize, uh, she brings a wealth of uh, expertise in the area of crowdfunding, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Karen Kerrigan is the President and CEO of the Small Business and Entrepreneurial Council located in Washington, D.C., she is, uh, and her company is an advocate uh, and an educational-based organization that assists entrepreneurs across the United States and across the world to improve the playing field and the entrepreneurship uh, and entrepreneurship level uh, for entrepreneurs today. So, without further ado, Karen, uh, welcome to our call today. Oh gosh, it's so great to be here, Glenn. Thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And I'm really uh, excited about interviewing you, Karen. Uh, so my first question to you is this, is the what question. What specifically, from your perspective, is crowdfunding? Well, from my perspective, it's, it's pretty simple. Crowdfunding is the practice of funding projects and soliciting financial contributions and investments uh, from a large group of people and generally done on online platforms and through online communities. Um, further to that question, uh, I know you're all about also uh, equity crowdfunding. Could you define that that for us as well? Well, sure, Glenn. Um, you know, equity and debt-based crowdfunding really came out of the uh, donation and gift-based crowdfunding movement back in 2008. I mean, folks listening and watching this might uh, might have been on a Kickstarter site or, or know about Indiegogo to know that they primarily do donation and gift-based crowdfunding. That means people give you money out of the generosity of their heart, and uh, you know they make it something in return, like some type of perk or your product or service. And from that, um, we uh, our organization was very involved in changing the law to make it possible to do equity and debt-based crowdfunding. So uh, two of my members came to me with the solution during the financial crisis of taking donation and gift-based crowdfunding, changing the law to make equity and debt-based crowdfunding a reality, where now entrepreneurs and startups can go on online platforms and they can actually look for investment, uh, investors, uh, people that want an equity stake uh, in their business. So. Uh, that was called the Jobs Act, the Jumpstart Our Business Startup Act. It's um, almost fully implemented. Um, people can, uh, entrepreneurs and startups can essentially get, uh, uh, can do equity and debt-based crowdfunding from accredited investors. We're just waiting for the Securities and Exchange Commission here in the United States to finalize the rules so that startups and entrepreneurs can basically um, solicit uh, investments from just ordinary investors. So that I hope I hope I describe that uh, good enough, Glenn, where folks understand sort of the difference where we are in the U.S. And in fact, Glenn, this is happening worldwide. I mean, it, we pioneered crowdfunding here in the U.S., and it's so exciting to see it taking off on a global basis. That's uh, that's really exciting. And uh, yes, uh, I you're very clear, uh, Karen. Um, what makes you uniquely qualified to speak about crowdfunding? Well, you know, I've been around entrepreneurs now for, uh, well, all my life, but with my organization now, the SBE Council, for over 20 years. And access to capital, whether you're a startup or a growth-oriented business, has been an enduring challenge. So um, so I know about the funding challenges of, um, of, of entrepreneurs. And um, I think with crowdfunding, what makes me uniquely qualified is that I've had really been blessed to be around uh, the pioneers and uh, the innovators and the entrepreneurs who are making equity and debt-based crowdfunding a reality. As I mentioned, two of my members, Woody Neese and Jason Best, came to me with the idea of, gosh, Karen, how do we make equity and debt-based crowdfunding legal? What is, how do we navigate Washington and the regulatory process to make this happen? You know, and during that process, I met some really dynamic people in the whole crowdfunding space. I've learned from them. I've absorbed from them. Um, we've helped uh, entrepreneurs uh, raise money through crowdfunding. So, um, you know, again, being a part of this whole movement uh, and actually helping entrepreneurs, providing them with educational materials, 
helping them from a regulatory uh, you know perspective and, and looking ahead at what that framework might look like that's put us in a good place to be uniquely qualified in this in this field uh, something uh, and I want you to add um, on what you just said here uh, because this is obviously a hugely relevant uh, topic but why something else that you'd like to add around what makes this so relevant for entrepreneurs in today's marketplace well you know going back to what I said yes you know access to capital continues to be a challenge for entrepreneurs here in the US but also across the globe but actually Glenn the whole environment um, uh, for raising capital and business financing is changing it's transition transitioning um, online online platforms again equity debt based crowdfunding it's so businesses really need to be uh, looking at crowdfunding and all the other types of financing alternative financing that's available online because there is a shift going on there is a transformation in the financing uh, arena um, and you know the numbers are outstanding there was a report that just came out from the uh, crowdfunding center in London that uh, that uh, reported that uh, crowdfunding is now available to over 90 percent of people that are online in over 160 countries in the second quarter of 2014 over 50,000 pledges were made per day per day Glenn for crowdfunding campaigns so when equity and debt based crowdfunding goes full bore when the when the rules are, are finalized here in the US I mean this really is set to explode so uh, this is very relevant for entrepreneurs because you know I think down the road they will be looking for the next their their next financing needs the next phase of financing on an equity or debt-based crowdfunding raise. Uh, very exciting. How does your system work for helping entrepreneurs create crowdfunding as a key strategy or initiative for their company's growth? Well, first and foremost, Glenn, we are really focused right now on um, on advocating and representing entrepreneurs in, from a regulatory perspective. So we have to get it right in terms of the rules that come out of the Securities and Exchange Commission to make equity and debt based crowdfunding workable for the startups, for the small businesses and the entrepreneurs who are going to be using crowdfunding but also for the platforms that are beginning to emerge or are actually providing this service to business owners and entrepreneurs. We have to make it a uh, the regulatory process light uh, and we can't, it can't be too burdensome or too complex because that can stop uh, crowdfunding for ordinary businesses you know right in its track secondly um, I, I mean really the big thing that we do is on the education front because we have a lot of work to do in that in that whole arena uh, my members we have a hundred thousand throughout the United States you know they are sort of up to date on crowdfunding are very aware of what crowdfunding is but if you look at some of the numbers, Glenn, only 10 to 12 percent of businesses, small businesses, actually know about crowdfunding or think it's something that would be appealing for them to do. So uh, education is the next big thing that we are focused on. And then, of course, we're focused on, um, uh, you know, direct, uh, you know, tips and training and business success strategies. Uh, and a whole educational component that we're going to be unveiling in the next couple of months that helps business owners on a step-by-step -step process on best practices, how to do it, how to do a successful crowdfunding raise. As an educational-based uh, company and organization that you run, what would you use is the number one mistake that you see entrepreneurs making today that do venture forth into the crowdfunding uh, domain? Well, it's, it's, I would say the number one mistake is really not having their ducks in a row when they actually go live, you know, hit the go light uh, for their profile page or get ready to, to launch uh, their crowdfunding campaign. You know, it takes anywhere from a month to three months to four months to get your act together before you go live with a campaign. You just can't say, oh, I'm here, I'm going to raise money, you know, aren't I beautiful, or isn't this a great idea? So there's a lot of work that needs to go involved. But I would say the number one mistake is not organizing and leveraging your own network, your family, your friends, your social network, you know, sort of all their contacts that can 
essentially fund your campaign as soon as it goes live. As soon as your campaign goes live, you want to show traction, you want to show success, you want to show that people are actually giving you pledges and support for your campaign, and that success creates more success, right, Glenn? So, um, you know, businesses that don't, or, or entrepreneurs and startups, or people trying to get funding for projects that don't sort of tap into their own networks and get that organized and have a plan for doing that, um, you know, their 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 efforts will be less successful. What's the uh, one question, uh, Karen, that you wished somebody would ask you about crowdfunding that they've never asked you before? Well, I think it, they've been sort of when I get asked. Well, let's just put it this way: the the one question that I don't get asked directly right. is what could sink crowdfunding? What could sink the opportunity and the potential for crowdfunding? Okay, uh, that's an excellent question. So what would be your answer to that question, Karen? Go overreach. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, it's, um, you know, it's, I, in the U.S. as many countries across the globe, I mean, the government wants to protect us, right? And, you know, crowdfunding is a new thing, um, you know, technology, people going online, you know, raising capital. And sometimes they want to look at the old ways of doing things and apply it, you know, to the new world of social media and technology. Um, so I would say uh, that would be my biggest concern. And I speak from experience on that because right now we are sort of looking at the proposed rules that the Securities and Exchange Commission here in the U.S. have put forward on crowdfunding. And there are some changes that really need to, they need to make on the final rules if they want those rules to align with the intent of Congress and President Obama uh, in, in, uh, in passing that law. So it just, it, you know, there's got to be a light regulatory touch uh, and, um, you know, again, it cannot be too expensive and burdensome for platforms to provide the service because they're going to have to pass that expense on to the entrepreneurs and the startups, you know, who use those services. And, um, again, access to uh, reasonable uh, price capital, um, you know, is what our economy needs and what entrepreneurs need uh, in order to uh, start up and grow. What, Karen, what is the first actionable step that you would recommend to the readers of Lifestyle Entrepreneur Magazine and specifically the viewers uh, of our interview? If they're not familiar with crowdfunding or the concept um, or how it works, I would encourage them to, you know, immediately go to one of the platforms. And I would suggest you know, two of my favorites are fundable.com or crowdfunder.com because those are business crowdfunding sites, startups and small businesses, where they have great tools and information uh, about how to crowdfund, how to set up a, a, you know, how to set up for success if you want to do a crowdfunding campaign. And I would also encourage them to actually fund a campaign. Um, you know, if you see a campaign that has traction on, on one of these sites or other sites, you know, to contribute the five or ten or fifteen or twenty five dollars that it is. Some ask for a thousand dollars, you can get something named after you, right? On one of these crowdfunding campaigns. But you don't have to do this to see how a successful campaign works or how an unsuccessful campaign works. So once that you contribute or donate to one of these campaigns, you can sort of see the whole process, the email, the communication, sort of all of it unfolding in terms of you know how to crowdfund, how to do it right, and in some cases you know how to improve um, uh, what you do you know differently to uh, improve your chances uh, for success on a crowdfunding campaign. Karen Kerrigan, thank you so much for the advocacy that you bring to the uh, the world of entrepreneurship, and uh, thank you uh, for your time today. I've uh, really enjoyed interviewing you. Oh, thanks so much, Glenn. It's been my pleasure.